Hey guys, it's a beautiful day in Vancouver. We're looking at a brand new one called the V-Bike Cito 20 Plus. And the 20 relates to the 20 inch wheels. The plus is because this has dual battery. And V-Bike, it's a Toronto based company. They offer free shipping if you're on Ontario, 99 bucks if you're outside of that. This bike is $29.99 Canadian and it's only available in Canada. To me, it was doing a lot of things right and I, I was just excited to look into it. I've been in touch with the company, learning about the different products they offer. So there are three flavors. You start with the Cito 18, which doesn't have these fat tires. The, the tires are just more traditional, narrow. They're gonna be a little bit lighter, a little bit more efficient rolling. Um, that one starts at $22.49. Then you go up to the Cito 20, with just one battery, it's like that main battery pack, and that's $23.49. Everything else is, is kind of the same. But then when you go up to the Cito 20 Plus, you get that second battery for the long range riding, $29.99. That's like the standard MSRP. I love that all of these bikes come with the fenders, they come with the rear rack, they come with the lights. So they're, they're very feature complete. I feel like they've done a great job in terms of weight positioning. I think it looks really nice. They do offer it in four colors. So we're looking at the red, but they also have white, blue, and black. We've got an excellent fat bike specific rear rack here that has like standard gauge tubing, pannier blockers, a bungee loop down here, integrated light on the back. It's just really nicely done. And I do want to call out that the, the max weight rating on it is a little bit lower. It's 19 kilograms. Sometimes you'll see these rated up to 25 kilograms, which of course is nice, but all things considered, I feel like the positioning of it and just the, the fact that it's included and looks so nice, they've really done a good job. Of course, for me, comfort is really important, especially if you're riding farther, you got that dual battery set up. So I love that they included a suspension fork that's color matched, right? That is attention to detail right there. This thing offers 80 millimeters of travel. I think it's 28 millimeter stanchion. So it's, it's not like the fanciest thing in the world. It's a spring fork. It adds some weight, but it does have preload adjust over here as well as lockout. So if you're someone who's riding in a city environment, you could lock that out. You're gonna be more efficient. You won't be bouncing. If you're someone who's a bit heavier, you can dial in the preload and that way you're not you know, really bouncing or bottoming out. I like that. They, they, this is a nicer than average suspension fork. They even have a suspension seat post back here. So EXA form, 30.4 millimeter diameter. And I mentioned that because if you want, and you wanna bring that saddle as far down as you can, you can swap that out for a rigid post and it's good to know the measurement. This one's about 350 millimeters long, 40 millimeters of travel right here. And there's even a preload adjust at the bottom of that. So if you open that, look at the bottom, there's like a hex bolt and you can loosen or tighten it. Very comfortable saddle. This is kind of a wider cruiser saddle with elastomer bumpers. We've got locking ergonomic grips. That's nice to see. Sometimes they're just the rubber ones that twist off. These are these are nicer. And we have this telescoping like steer post right here so you can raise or lower this. The bike does only come in one frame size as with most folding bikes that I see. But I feel like it's, it's more approachable this way. There's a lot of adjustability and because it's a step through, it's gonna be able to accommodate people of different heights pretty well. It is fairly large. Like when you look at the fat tires and then just the, the length of this thing, it's not like this super compact bike. And it does weigh a bit more, okay? This thing is like 83.7 pounds. That is definitely above average. And it's because of the fenders and the suspension. And of course the two batteries. This battery right here is about 7.7 .7 pounds. Similar for the one in, in the main tube. They do not match, they're not the same. So I'm gonna unlock the, the middle battery and show you guys what that looks like. Just twist and then slide it up and off. Again, it weighs about seven and a half pounds. We got the little LED charge level indicator and the charging port and that off switch, which is nice because if you aren't using this for an extended period, turning it off is gonna reduce that phantom power draw. You wanna store this in a cool dry location to help extend the life and keep it kind of charged, right? At least at 50% if you aren't using it. Extreme heat can be hard on lithium ion cells and the extreme cold is gonna temporarily limit your range. And back to using this in Toronto in the winter, it's nice to have two batteries because at least you'll get there. Okay, and then here's the second battery pack. Just turn that, kind of pull up. Love that it's color matched. Looks beautiful on the frame. And there is the charging port right here. So it uses the same charger. You get two three amp chargers. You can charge these simultaneously. It might take you know five and a half 
six hours, depending on how, how empty they are, which is, which is pretty decent. It's kind of typical. I love that they give you three amp chargers because these are high capacity packs. And let's see if we can get the stats here. 48 volt, 15 amp hour, 720 watt hour. That's above average. Some of the trade-offs I've noticed is, in some ways this is this might be a good thing, but you have to use a key to activate the bike. Most e-bikes I see, you just power it on and you go. This makes it a little bit more secure, but it's, it's one extra key you have to hang on to. And there are already two, like battery specific keys. So there's three keys for this bike and thankfully they give you two of each, but these ones, thankfully they, they, they look a little bit different, but you kind of end up just with a little bit of extra clutter and you do have to keep this one handy because you have to take that battery off in order to charge it. And I was impressed to hear that the weight rating on this, the maximum weight rating is, it's like 300 pounds. A lot of times I'll see folding electric bikes rated at like 200 or 250 because you know, you have these, these joints and you don't want to have these being compromised. I feel like they've done a good job and you don't even have this big gusset that's sticking out that's going to get your knees or your your ankles or something getting bumped. So it's it's a very clean, sleek design. It's even got internally routed cables for the most part. So you can see up here, there's a lot of cables up front because we have motor inhibitors on the brake levers, but they go right through the frame and then they they come out right there after the bottom bracket, but they're they're after. So this section of the frame is pretty well protected. We've even got that rest for when you fold the bike, so it's not scratching up the, the cranks quite as much, and you're not gonna collide with the chain ring. And of course, they have an aluminum alloy guide as well, so that's gonna keep the chain from falling off when it's folded, and they have a steel derailleur guard in the rear. Again, a nice thing to see, very thoughtfully done, so if the bike tips over as you're riding it, or maybe you've got it folded and it ends up on its side, this part of the bike, which is, which is sensitive and vulnerable, that's the motor power cable, it's gonna be pretty well protected. We have an okay freewheel, so this threads onto uh, the axle. The range on this, it's like, okay, it's seven speeds. We've got Shimano Altus, that's the second step up in the Shimano group sets. Short cage derailleur here, it's not hanging down super low, it's not gonna get bumped by curbs and stuff quite as easily, but the spread is like 12 to 28, so you, you really don't have this like really big low gear. It'd be nice to have like 11 to 32 or something like that, but this is just, this is, I'm used to seeing this. It's just kind of like a, a more entry part. This is a planetary geared Bafang hub motor and it's a uh, 500 watt nominal up to 800 watt peak. They say 80 newton meters of torque, which is really impressive. You are gonna get a mechanical advantage because of the smaller wheel size. And I think that's nice. I mean, this is a hub motor. This is a class two electric bike that has pedal assist as well as a twist throttle, which you can see right there. As far as the pedal assist, you can see the cadence sensor on this side. It's sealed 12 magnet, pretty good fairly high resolution, maybe not quite as responsive as a torque sensor or something, but that tends to cost a lot more. And I have been riding this around through the grass and on the, the paths and stuff here, and it's working pretty well. So I, I just wanna give a thumbs up on that, kind of explaining what I'm seeing here. We got a kickstand, it's positioned well, it's not creating pedal lock back here. We've got nice 170 millimeter standard forged aluminum alloy crank arms with these awesome aluminum alloy pedals from Welgo. They give you an excellent platform that feels stiff and it's, it's wide. It's not like these tiny plastic ones that kind of squish under your feet. I love that. They're gonna hold up better if this bike tips over and they just feel great when I'm pedaling. You can kind of see how the wires and things are, are coming out. They're fairly protected under and inside the frame, but when they do become exposed here for the rear brake, housing. I mean, it, this is nice. It's got like a little extra piece of rubber covering the wire. It's going to keep dust and water from dripping into that housing as easily. And that it isn't tipped forward. It's not like water's going to run down into the housing. I like that this is nearly flat or almost tipped back a little bit. It's a small thing, but it's just going to make braking easier. When you think about these mechanical brakes right here, the right one is going to the rear and it just has a lot farther to go. And so it tends to it requires more hand effort and over time it can kind of get gummed up. At least that's what I've experienced on other bikes. So I feel like this is a really good um, configuration that they've, they've set up here. And it even has like a little clicker here for adjusting the brake pads, I think. And of course you can use a hex wrench right here and kind of tighten or loosen the cables. We have barrel adjusters up here so you can kind of, you know, loosen this. If we go to the left, it's actually going to create a longer distance, which means that this brake lever isn't gonna have to come in quite so far and like, you know, pinch your fingers or start to actually hit the bar. These are decent, even though they, you know, this is unbranded. Nut is a brand I've seen 
more frequently, especially with like supply chain challenges in recent years. I think they've done a good job and they're 180 millimeter rotors, which is a, a great mechanical advantage for a 20 inch wheel size. So back to the motor getting a mechanical advantage and then the brakes having a mechanical advantage, they've done a good job. 180s front and rear, and that's gonna give you the stopping power you need for a heavier electric bike like this. So I wanna show you guys the, the turn signals and stuff. We've already got the lights on. I'm gonna do the left turn signal. There we go. And then if I click the right one, you kind of get like a hazard light going on. And that's that's neat. I mean, they're yellow. This thing is a really, really well done. I, I actually really like the brake light, how it lights up that way. It's, it's definitely gonna be more visible than average, especially because you have the reflective sidewall stripes as well. And that's important. I mean, if you're someone who's actually using this for food delivery or you're commuting to, to work or school, um, maybe you're, you're taking this, you're traveling with it in an RV, you're just sitting lower. That's like almost always the case with folding bikes. So the fact that it is a little bit more upright, that you've got all the extra lights and, and high quality stuff, there's a little beeper horn. And then I love that they do have that charging port underneath. It's just a standard USB type A charging port. You could use that if you're mounting your phone and you're doing that for, for deliveries or something. I don't know where you'd put the phone exactly. Sometimes they have these accessory bars that can clip right here. Okay, so we're gonna get ready and unfold this thing here. Just getting the pedal straightened out. My buddy Tej is gonna help me unfold this thing. Um, go for it, man. Usually the first step is, you know, kind of opening it up and maybe having the kickstand at the ready. Oh, we got a nice friend today. Pretty excited about the bike, huh? <laughs> there we go. And I love how there's like a little locking piece right here. This is what I was talking about. The joint really isn't very big. It's not up here where you're gonna knock your knees or anything. I think the last step is to maybe get the, the handlebar up straight. So he's got that in place. We have the little sliding lock piece. And then the last thing would be, you know, get that, that seat in the right position, raise it or lower it. Thank you so much, Taj. I appreciate your help. Okay, guys, so let's go through the display here. We've got voltage, battery capacity, five bars. So each bar represents like a 20% step. It's nice to have the voltage because you get a little bit more fine tune. I like to see percentage, but with displays like this, I've seen this one before, you have a lot of real estate, you have grayscale. It's fairly easy to adjust in terms of glare, which is nice. And then over here we have modes, power, normal, and eco. We're on normal. And in the settings menu, you can adjust this. Of course, with higher power, you're gonna be draining the battery a little bit faster. Here we have our current speed. It's in kilometers per hour. Down here, assist level, pedal assist is what pass stands for. You can use the plus or minus to navigate this menu. And down at zero, the throttle still works. So you've got this thing almost like a little scooter. You can, you can go along without worrying about activating pedal assist. And that's kind of nice. You do get full power with that twist throttle at all times. And it's variable speed. So, you know, the farther you twist it, the more power you're gonna get. It's nice and smooth, kind of ramps in efficiently, which is going to maximize your range. And I think that's partially because we're in normal. Again, it would be a little peppier if we took it up to power. Down here, we've got our odometer, time, trip, trip one and trip two. And I think we can navigate through those by pressing the set button over here on the left. Fairly easy to reach. I was actually, you know, we've got a lot of buttons here, more than I'm used to seeing. That's because we've got turn signals in the back, little horn, and then a dedicated headlight button. So that's great. If you want to do walk mode, since this is a heavier bike, let's say you're going across the grass or something and you've got the cargo rack loaded up, just hold that minus button for a second and it just moves itself forward at a nice, slow, easy pace. I appreciate that. And then to get to the settings menu, we just hold set for a couple seconds. And here we are. So set menu zero, we can change, you know, eco, normal, or power. Those are the modes we talked about earlier. I'm actually gonna leave it in power. Then we hit set and it goes to the next one. Trip one, trip two, we can clear those. And then set two, we could change the uh, top speed. Three, 22 inches, that's talking about the tires. And it is 22 because we have fat tires here. And then we could change from kilometers to miles if we wanted. And then we're back to the beginning. I think if we just hold set, we're gonna exit that and we're back to riding mode. Uh, shifting through the gears, we've got this nice Shimano SIS index shifter, very large buttons. Sometimes you see the little triggers down here, but I guess they didn't have room for that with the, the locking key concept and the, the twist throttle. This makes sense. It works well if you have gloves on. And if you're someone who's new, it's very clear like which gear you're in. So we've got it in power mode right now. It's gonna give us as much power as possible. It doesn't matter what assist level I'm in for the throttle, that's still full power. So I'm just gonna try to climb this little hill over here and see how we do. Yeah, 
we did it. Now we're in the marshy stuff. Those nice fat tires are helping us stay afloat. We're not sinking in too much. And I'm able to just feather this throttle. I'm not out of control. I'm not juicing it. This is juicing it. Whoa, really starts to bounce around a little bit. The tires are fairly full right now. It'd be a little bit more comfortable if I reduce the capacity. So we actually do have some sand down here and that's one of the fun things with these fat tires. You can lower the tire pressure a little bit and go off road. Uh, my experience has, has been that you have to take it all the way down to like five. And we can see here, min max, it's like five to 30. So we're probably at 30 right now. It's really hard. I'm just gonna kind of like wing it and try to get this lower and actually take this into the sand. It's really nice to have a throttle to get started because you can imagine pedaling and balancing. Um, I'm not sure how many people actually ride on beaches, but here we go. Wow, that is pretty impressive, especially because this is like soft, dry sand. And if you've ever tried to ride a bike in this, normally like the front tire is just sliding all over the place, but you get that extra like surface area when you lower the pressure and because they're four inches wide, it's pretty cool. It's neat to see. And it would also apply to like softer terrain, like muddy kind of marshy stuff or possibly snow. You know, if the snow isn't too fluffy, otherwise you just cut right through it. I really feel like they've done a great job with this. I was excited to see it. Again, some of the limitations on, it's really only available in Canada. And if you're outside of Ontario, it costs $99 to have this shipped, but still at $29.99 Canadian, pretty good price. And I just, you know, it's fun to look at these things. I feel like they're, you know, this is a company, it's kind of a family company. They really care about sustainability. They're very enthusiastic. And to see this thing up close, have it for a day, you know, ride around the beaches and stuff. I, I really enjoyed it. So that is the V-Bike Cito 20 Plus with the dual battery. For the full written review on this, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. I have all the stats and everything. There's also a comparison tool. So you can see this back to back with some other options and there's forums. So of course, you know, see what real people have to say about it. I've only been riding it for a little while, but from what I can tell, they've done a good job. So I love you guys, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.